Hi, I'm Ian and welcome to Astro Time Traveller. This is part two in a series I'm doing this spring trying to capture the Pillars of Creation in M16 uh, and each night when I can I'm going to focus on that uh, probably in the early morning as it rises and try and capture as many images as I can each night and then over a series of nights end up consolidating them all and stacking them all together to get a really good image with a lot of data. So I just uh, published part one recently that shows me doing the uh, first setup, the initial uh, pictures I took. I took 15, but only seven of them were worth stacking. And I showed a final image from that. Tonight is gonna be part two, so I'm gonna give it another go and we'll see how we get on. Hopefully I'm gonna set up and do all of this through the planning mode of the ASI Air Pro. So I'm gonna set it up on M63 to start with, and then I'm gonna move about 2.30 in the morning across to M16 when it starts to rise above the, the shed in my garden so I can actually do it. And to do those two images, one being a galaxy and one being a nebula, I'm gonna use my new um, filter wheel that you can see attached now uh, to my rig, um, and which I've just done another video on to talk about that, so that I can use uh, probably no filter when I'm doing the galaxy, and then using my Optolong L Extreme filter when I move on to M16 and the Pillars of Creation. So we'll see how it goes. Clearly there's a few things to uh, try and work out when you do the planning mode uh, on a first target, how long it will take, let's say uh, five minutes in exposure, and then if it does a meridian flip, and if you do a series of auto refocuses, then that's gonna take quite a while to, to work out exactly how that will finish, because I want it to finish about 2.25, 2.30 in the morning, and move on to M16, and I plan to be in bed at that time asleep. So it's just trying to work out how I set up the ASI Air Pro to do all of that without me having to uh, intervene during the middle of the night. So fingers crossed, we'll see how it goes. And if I get some uh, good images of M16 tonight, then I'll pull those together with the uh, first seven that I did and start to see if we can see the, the final imaging approve, improving as I get more and more data on the pillars of creation. So I actually uh, woke up in the middle of the night and it was pretty much at the same time that I was finishing on M63 and just doing uh, moving across to M16. So it moved across and then it did a autofocus and now it's, you can see it's 248 and the first image is just about to come in of M16. So it's always a, an exciting time to see that first uh, image, particularly of a nebula. And it's just lucky I was uh, up at this time of uh, the night to see it. So. You see it's just loaded up, there it is. Let's just do an auto uh, restretch and wow, wow, that looks uh, that looks good. So no clouds there tonight, although I think there are some due later. But uh, we have a look in, I always like to just check the star size below three. So that's good. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that first image. So it's always good just to uh, just have a look around the image, make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, it seems to be. And if you just kind of focus in, although it's upside down, you can definitely see there's the, the pillars of creation within the uh, Eagle Nebula. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'll let it run for another, I think I've got it set for doing 26 images over the next uh, couple of hours. So we'll see how that goes and uh, we'll come back in the morning and uh, get ready to start processing uh, the image. And hopefully I did seven on the, first night and we'll see how many we get with this uh, second night to start building a, a data bank of images to improve the quality as we go through. So here I'm in deep sky stack and I'm about to load up the images. Actually the clouds did come in and uh, after about 10 images everything was clouded out so I only got 10 on the second night and in fact only nine of those were actually really good images. So as you can see here, I'm about to load up nine images from the second night. Uh, and I'm going to then stack those in a minute with the seven images of the first. But the first thing I want to do is just see which are the best images in here. So I have had a quick look through uh, subframe selector in uh, PixInsight. But now I'm just going to select through here 
uh, by registering which uh, frame I want to uh, have as my reference frame. Now I haven't really done multiple nights stacking in Deep Sky Stacker for quite a while so I think if I remember right it's good to use groups one and groups two for subsequent nights and just to keep a reference frame in the main group and uh, put the dark frame in that group as well because anything in the main group will be associated with the other groups. Um, so with the other groups I want to uh, load up the actual images from those nights. So if we go back here to uh, last night and I'll just load up everything but my reference frame back in and then what I'll be able to do is then load up my uh, calibration frames, my flat frames and my dark flats within this group so that they're calibrating against the the same night of images that I took. So if I just go back and then uh, add in for group two my first night of images. So if I go back, uh, I think it was back on the 15th. So if I just open those up, go into M16, that's the seven images. So I'm not getting very many at the moment. So even with uh, seven and nine, I'm only gonna have 16 stacking overall. But now I've added those in, I can now go back and add in my uh, master dark, which is for 300 seconds and at minus 10 uh, degrees. And then if I go back to, and I just wanna make this one my reference frame, but if I go back to group one, I can then add back in the uh, flats and the darks. Now I actually, I've already processed M63 this morning, so I have a master flat for last night, and I also have a master dark for last night, so I can add those straight in, so that makes life a little bit easier. Uh, and then likewise, if I go back to a few days ago, I just need to go back and uh, load up the uh, master light I had uh, sorry, the master flat I had for that, and then likewise the master dark flat that I also had for the 15th, um, which I actually did on the 16th because I, uh, I kept all the equipment out and ran it the second night. So, um, so there we go. So now I can check everything, and we're pretty much ready to, to stack. Yeah, I've got 16 light frames, one dark frame, two flat frames, and two dark flat frames. So let's go into register. I'm now going to stack them, so I'll add that. Let's just see the uh, star count size. Yep, 78 is okay. Uh, I'm probably going to do this under mosaic because I've got two nights and whilst all the equipment has stayed the same, I did take away and put back the, uh, the uh, mount, etc. So they're not going to be maybe exactly the same field of view to the precise. So probably mosaic works, but let's just check that through. It all seems to be ready to go. So now I can run the process. So let's do that. And then we'll come back in a second. Uh, here we are, we're nearly finished at the end of the process. Uh, and it's just about to load up the final image. Here we go, it's just loading it up. Ah, there we go. And uh, if you've seen the earlier video, you, you can see that's a lot darker than the very mauve images I was getting out when I hadn't used any uh, flat frames or dark flat frames. So that looks, uh, that looks pretty normal, pretty what I would expect coming out at this stage. So uh, what I'll now do is I just want to save that. And as it's part of this project, I'll put it into my M16 project folder. And we'll probably call it uh, something to make sure we know it's the kind of cumulative uh, effects. So let's call it M16 underscore uh, cum. Uh, and then we'll put the date of the, the most recent images, which was the the 24th of uh, April, so let's do 2204.24. And there we go, that's it saved. So now we can go into Pix Insight. So let's go across to that and let's just open that image up. Uh, let's go back into the Eagle, into the project. Uh, there it is, the second one across. So open that up and let's do a quick auto stretch and see what it looks like. And uh, there it is. So that, uh, I think that looks pretty good. I think it looks more defined. Let's just uh, invert it so we can see it uh, the right way up. And there's the pillars. There's the whole Eagle Nebula, or most of it. And if you go in, we can actually see the pillars. And I think that, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. What I'll now do is I'll just uh, show you the difference between the first image I did and the second. I play around with uh, a lot of the uh, color elements so uh, to get different colors so we'll see what what they look like six uh, seven images versus 16. 
So here they are. So on the left is the first image and on the right is the second. And I think you can see on the right there is more definition coming through. So although it's only 16 images, it's much better than the seven and there's a lot less noise. So stay tuned. There'll be more parts to this as I do uh, more exposures over the coming days or weeks. But uh, I'll leave you with that final image. Thank you.